You're watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello everyone and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. Today I've got a review for you from Colt. This is a CT248 sow belly stockman. It comes in this sleeve with just a blank sleeve with the model number on it. And then you have this box which is sort of a jewelry style. The felt liner and a cutout and then a strap holding it in. And you get the Colt logo up top there on the material. And then just a snap close. Looks like there may have been something here at some point with glued on and like a frame around this padded area here. But uh, it's gone missing. So if anybody happens to know what these look like in original condition, uh, leave a comment, would you please? I'd just kind of like to know, you know, maybe a description or even a link to an image of one. I I've never seen one other than the, the one I have here. All right, so let's take a look at the knife itself. What we've got is a sow belly stockman in three and three quarter inch length, standard size. Again, this is the Colt CT248. And a little history about the knife. These knives were produced by Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And they came out with several series of knives for Colt prior to... I want to say prior to 1994 when Rough Rider was introduced. They were making knives for Colt, and they made yeah, at least four or five different series, if not more. One of which was the Coral Snake series, another was the Coal Miner series. And then you'll find out that Rough Rider ends up reintroducing those Colt-type series knives in their Rough Rider line. So they just basically take those ideas and then just reintroduce them in their own Rough Rider line. But prior to that, we had thin knives like this being made by Smoky Mountain Knife Works for Colt. And this is the imitation uh, black stag bone. Um, it is actual bone, but imitation stag. And you've got, you know, the bone here with a lot of character here. And then the black uh, dye in the, the crevices there. You've got nickel silver pins, nickel silver bolsters with the... Uh, pinched ends and the rings, just a single ring on either side. Then you got this nickel silver shield here that just says Samuel Colt in cursive. And then on the back, you've got a very well, uh, very much like the front, very well uh, copied back. Nice smooth transitions to the pins and the bolsters. Nothing outstanding. Then you've got brass liners, stainless springs, and everything is pretty well done except for this little gap here at the bottom left. And the blades, we'll take a look at those. You've got the clip blade for your main blade. Match strike pull, sort of a mirror finish, not quite a mirror finish. Or like a semi-gloss if you were lock talking about paint, right? Not quite a mirror finish to the blades. Match strike pull. Got a Colt Tang stamp there. Flat grind with the nice even edge there. Here's a look at the Colt Tang stamp. None on the reverse. You've got the model number there. And it says quality since 1836. And then China below it. There's a look at the edge on this side. And there's that nail nick, match strike, match strike pull there. A little bit of blade rub, pretty typical. Now let's take a look at the measurement of it. We've got a two and three quarter inch blade with about a two and a quarter inch cutting edge on that main clip blade. And the pulls on the back for the secondary blades are both on the back side. You got your sheep's foot on the left here and your spade blade on the right. The spade blade has the tank stamp, as you can see there. And then the sheep's foot has it as well. So all blades have the Colt tank stamp there. Now the spade blade measures just over two inches. Call it two and an eighth. With the cutting edge right about one and three quarter inches. Sheep's foot, 
Got a measurement of two inches for the cutting, or excuse me, the full length of the blade, and then about one and three quarter inches for cutting edge. Again, these are not quite mirror finished, but they're very close. So, if we want to compare what I thought was maybe the closest reintroduction for that line, we might look at the marbles. Okay, and the marbles has two rings on its bolsters, so a little different there. A little lighter in color overall. Their springs are wider than the Colt is, so it makes for a little wider knife. You've got, uh, a, you know, the double rings on the bolsters there and that black underliner. So there are quite a few differences, but the blades themselves are very similar, with the exception of the swedge. Now, the shape of the blades are the same. They both have the match strike pull. But again, they have that swedge there, makes them a little different. But you can see the similarities in the blades are very much the same shape. And you have half stops on these, so there are quite a number of differences, right? But you can kind of see the influence there for this knife that ends up being produced for Smoky Mountain Knife Works by their house brand marbles. But uh, that's about it, guys. Just a, uh, a quick overview of... This neat series of knives, uh, the, the Colt knives are pretty expensive. Um, they go for quite a bit of money and on, on eBay, uh, I guess just because of the Colt name, because the, the actual make, I don't think people realize, is really, the quality is really not that much different from an older Rough Rider. Um, but you have that Colt name on there and people, people kind of go nuts for the Colt branded knives. Now, um, they are tougher to find, um, and particularly, I don't know why, but the sow belly seems to be a pretty popular one amongst the, the, the cult collectors because uh, you have a heck of a time trying to find it. Um, and I've only really found a few examples of the sow belly pattern out there on eBay, and, and, you know, by the Smoky Mountain knife or produced type sow bellies and um, when they are, when they are out there they're pretty expensive usually over fifty dollars so this is the only one I've found where uh, I was able to get it for for less than that price and that's why I'm showing it here today but um, if you're interested in these just know you know they are made by Smoky Mountain Knife Works and you probably don't want to overpay for them um, you can probably find something of equal quality in the Rough Rider line uh, maybe some of their older, older, early makes of Rough Riders are just as good. So there you have it, guys. Um, about all I have to say about these guys. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell. And make sure you're made aware of what videos when they drop. You guys have a fantastic day. And please do take care. <laughs>